Hello, and welcome to an informational webinar, Bridging the Divide, California History Social Science Lessons Designed to Optimize Distance Learning. Today, I'm sharing uh, one lesson from fifth grade from a collection of lessons on our website that highlight lessons from grades K-12 that you can use for distance learning. So they are not representative of an entire curriculum, but mo model lessons that you can use with your students as is, or follow the format as a way to guide you through um, distance learning. Our lessons are also appropriate for hybrid learning as they uh, focus on synchronous and asynchronous class time. And they are appropriate for both distance learning, hybrid learning, or a combination of the two. So we are showcasing one lesson today and um, hoping that it will be something beneficial to you now and in the future. Uh, feel free to copy it or adjust it, and create other lessons and use it as an idea seed to help maximize distance learning with your students. Um, the lessons that we created from the CLICK project and CLICK stands for Content, Literacy, Inquiry, and Civics. And it is a project designed to help the state of California implement our state framework. So we have decided in the last two years to um, help with implementation, but this last year since March, uh, and we've all been uh, thrown into distance learning, we decided that it would be really great to um, help teachers by showing some model lessons. So we decided to use this 5E format. So this format is very common and was actually first developed in the area of science. But after looking at it and using it with classes last spring, we realized that it was a really uh, applicable format for history social science and especially for distance learning. So our lessons are designed via um, HyperDocs. So you can click links and be sent to primary sources, to charts, to various applications that will help you um, teach your students uh, live with synchronous class time and also provide them with materials for their asynchronous learning. When you uh, download this slide, you will see that you can click on here and you will be sent to information on the five E's. Um, we, will, we did this so that it would be easy for teachers to follow and also um, be a model of structure for you as you develop your online lessons in social studies and in other content areas. So I'm gonna share a little bit of background knowledge. Again, if you click on this link, you'll be sent to uh, a slide that explains more about the 5E instructional model. And on the other link, you will see um, a further explanation of the, uh, the five E's. So when we talk about the different phases of the 5E format, the first phase is engage. Um, this is when we want students to get ready to learn. So we're tapping their background knowledge or building their background knowledge uh, or both. Um, and we're hoping to cultivate that curiosity at this phase um, and, and, and make it so they want to know the answer to their compelling question or that they have more questions and they're just excited to get going and learn um, whatever it is that you're studying. So there are activities in the engage section that are for synchronous class time and asynchronous class time. In the explore section of the lesson, this is these, these activities are basically the learning experiences. And so we provide the um, materials and the structures for students to dig into the content. The explain part of the lesson is where students synthesize new information. They are um, encouraged to ask questions, seek clarification. And we really hope that in this section of the lesson that they are their understanding is solid, it's boosted, and, and they're starting to really um, fully comprehend the content and um, the analysis skills involved. The elaborate portion of the lesson is where students apply what they've learned, and they develop a deeper understanding, they create and investigate further, and they really cement that knowledge. The evaluate part of the lesson 
Uh, we provide um, suggestions of places within the lesson where you can have formative assessment and also summative assessments. Notice that the evaluation is, the central, is central to all of the other E's. So just like in the regular classroom, we're constantly um, watching our students and, and assessing and evaluating and adjusting what we're doing next. So we use the evaluation piece throughout to decide, should we go on with the lesson? Do I need to reteach it? And so on. So those things that we do in the regular classroom don't change for distance learning. Um, my name is Rebecca Valbuena. I am an elementary teacher, just giving you a little background on, um, on me. I have written the K-5 lessons and I'm still writing them. So uh, there'll be more added to the collection uh, in the coming weeks. Um, I, for the last five years, I've been a teacher on special assignment in the Glendora Unified School District, which is in Los Angeles County, and I have been in charge of professional development and academic coaching. I've also been a member of the CLIC team, um, and I represent Region 11, Southern California. Um, so we are proudly um, helping districts across the state uh, implement the history social science framework. I am the president-elect of the California Council of the Social Studies, a wonderful organization uh, whose mission is to enhance and provide the best social studies learning and teaching across the state. And I'm a board member of the National Council for the Social Studies. In the evenings, I do teach a methods class, history methods for pre-service teachers at Cal Poly Pomona. So I spend a lot of my time in history, social science, and with experts and teachers and trying to um, perfect the best skills, both in class and through distance learning. So this lesson that I'll share today or give you a quick tour on is called Securing the Right to Vote in America. It addresses the challenges of distance learning, particularly student engagement. Because we know that this has uh, one of our biggest challenges is how do we get students engaged on a daily basis. Um, we hope that the lessons that we've written are relevant to students and important and part of their lives and they see them that way and that we also provide many options for learning and for assessment. So our lessons are directly tied to the standards and framework. They integrate very nicely with English language arts and English language development. And you will also find areas within the lesson when it's appropriate that it is um, connected to economics or geography or civics, social justice, SEL, technology tools, specialized technology tools, um, VAPA, STEM, math, science, LGBTQ plus history, et cetera. And those are noted within the lesson within the parentheses for you as the educator to see where your integrations are happening. So I'd like to give you a quick tour of this lesson and share with you some of its major components. It's really self-explanatory, and um, I'm hoping that when you take a look at it and go to teach it, that it is something that you find very easy to use and beneficial. Um, each lesson begins with the cover page and the title, and then moves into the acknowledgments of all of the individuals and organizations that have helped make this project possible. As we head into the lesson, there's a blue section, which is basically background information for the teacher. Um, pay special attention to the learning objectives and the compelling question. In this lesson, the compelling question, the overarching question is, how has the Constitution changed over time to secure the right to vote for citizens? Um, I've given an a approximation of how long this, this lesson series will take. There's a connection to standards, frameworks, and finally you have your supporting questions. So your supporting questions, when students answer them, and they're answerable after specific learning activities, once the supporting questions are answered, um, students are able to answer that compelling question. And so these are like stairs or stepping stones to that overarching question. Um, the engage piece, um, that piece where we're trying to 
ignite curiosity and to get our students ready to learn. It actually starts with what we would do in the classroom. It's called a gallery walk, where they look at a series of photos. In this instance, they're going to do it on their computer, and you do it together in synchronous class time. So when you click here, you will get a link to a series of pictures um, that have to do with voting. And students will just do a brainstorm in the chat bar, like what comes to mind when you see these pictures? And so what we're doing as a teacher is we're actually um, building background, right? Getting them to realize, well, we're going to, oh, I see. If I've never seen a voting booth, this is what it looks like. So as we look through the pictures and write in the chat bar, they're actually building their background knowledge and we're tapping their background knowledge, getting them ready to learn. Um, it also has a vocabulary activity within it. And their asynchronous uh, activity is uh, a continuation of the vocabulary. So they do a little bit of work with the vocabulary. The assignment is attached. And then they will watch a video, an uh, informational video. So the link is here. You'll provide a copy of the assignment and a link to the video for their asynchronous class time. Suggestions each and every section for formative assessment. In the explore portion, um, we, we are giving background now. So in this section, we're giving background to the students, we're reviewing the video, and then we take a look at a timeline of the history of voting rights, which is linked right here. Um, what we do with students during synchronous time is read over the timeline, look at it together, and try to look for cause and effect relationships. Um, and you'll guide your students through that in, in virtual class time, like actual class time. Um, through Zoom or Google Meets or whatever platform you use. But helping students get through that, uh, helping them read it, make sense of it, and looking for those cause and effect relationships. During their asynchronous time, you give them a link to that timeline, and they're going to do some cause and effect graphic, they write some ideas in a graphic organizer, which is provided, and they will write some sentences, some structured sentences for uh, what they see in terms of um, this happened uh, in, in voting right history because this is what's going on in the world in history. So the timeline has like a double side. It has what's happening in voting rights and what's happening in history. So they can see a cause and effect relationship. And there's a, several examples within the lesson for you to look at. The explain section, um, we, we ask students to share their cause and effect uh, observations from the timeline. And then they're tasked in their asynchronous time to search for primary sources related to the history of voting rights. Um, and so there's several examples linked right here of women's suffrage, Native American right to vote, the African American right to vote, and there are primary source examples. But also, um, here are some two very good sites that students can go to to search for primary source um, documents having to do with the history of voting rights. Um, so hopefully uh, they are excited and have that learner autonomy to find a, a primary source and then they're going to add it to a slide deck that every student in the class gets one slide to put their um, primary source on. Um, in the elaborate portion of the lesson, we take a look at the student made slide deck where every child has made a slide and we show the slides and have each student speak um, in synchronous time about the primary source that they found. So um, from there, um, that might be one 45 minute and you perhaps another day, I'll do another 40, the second part of this is a 45 minute slot. Um, so here we are sharing our slide deck and then we're actually going to talk about uh, the qualifications for voting. And so sharing with students and a mini lecture style, um, what it is that uh, qualifies you to vote in America. And then um, when you take a look at this link right here, um, they look at a graph of how many registered voters voted in the last general election. Actually, it's the one before, not this most current one. That data is not necessarily easy out yet, but um, it was, this was written before our uh, current election, so it's the last one. Um, but go ahead and find the current one. I'm sure it's easy enough to find. Um, but we take a look at 
according to what would really be cool is comparing those two. But we take a look at a graph of how many registered voters voted um, and take a look at that data. So you have like a math inclusion there as well. Um, so when students do that, uh, they hopefully will conclude that, um, you know, not, people are not necessarily exercising their right to vote or they're registering to vote, and then they will see a need to um, encourage adults over 18 to register to vote and so on. Um, so their task is to create a public service announcement. They can do that in a poster, a pamphlet, or a small video. Um, so there's lots of ideas here of how to do that. And there's an example by some students in Oklahoma. Um, and so you can turn this into a really wonderful English language arts lesson on, um, uh, you know, sharing an opinion and persuading through a public service announcement. So their asynchronous time, they're actually creating a public service announcement, whether it's a poster, pamphlet, or video, and then uh, coming back to share that with our, with our greater class. Um, this unit has, uh, the series of lessons has ideas for your synchronous and asynchronous evaluation um, piece as well. So it's an exciting lesson, uh, really gets kids involved, and it's relevant to the times. And um, hopefully they see the importance of registering to vote when they turn 18. Final thoughts on this lesson. Um, please remember that the design is intentional with those five E's and that the synchronous, asynchronous class time is designed to increase student engagement and uh, help students dig deeply into a concept to, solidi to solidify uh, uh, knowledge and analysis skills. And we've tried to create innovative ways to engage our students through open-ended activities and inquiry uh, project-based instruction. Um, there are plenty of ways to extend um, and suggestions throughout the lesson for extensions. And you are obviously going to have your own ideas and materials to include in any of the lessons. So we're hoping it gives you a nice foundation to uh, provide some solid um, history social science instruction for your students and to give you a model of what you can do uh, in the future with your other curricular um, standards. Uh, the links to all of our history social science lessons will be found in the notes section of this video. And importantly, please copy down or save this uh, website, californiahss.org, has a ton of resources, as well as the links to all of the lessons K-12, all of the model lessons K-12. So please utilize them, share them, um, enjoy them, um, good luck to you. Have a wonderful rest of the year and um, hoping to hear back to see how your lessons went. And if you have further suggestions for us, let us know. Um, best wishes and take care.